Hi, my name is Avery and welcome to my channel. Today I got another quick video for y'all where I'm going to be doing something very similar to what I did in the last video with OpenGL, but I'm just going to be showing how to make a simple window with SDL2. And along with the window, we're going to draw a rectangle that fills it up so it can have a background color. We're going to make it so it renders every 60 frames every second. And there's a little bit of keyboard input so we can make it so we can close the window and toggle full screen. So now that I've got that settled, if you guys are new here, go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you guys could, that would be great. And like the video too. And you should go and check out the other videos. But yeah, let's jump right into it. So the first thing we want to do is include the SDL2 library. And I'm going to be putting down the link in the description for where you guys can get this. But it's pretty simple to get installed. I'll have the link in there for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So yeah, we're just going to use that. And then we're also going to use the standard library right here. And now let's define our window size. So window size will be 1280 and the height will be 720. Now in our main function, we'll have the main loop, and this will just be a boolean. Let's define our boolean right here. It'll be just boolean running, and we'll set that to set that in here to true. So running equals true. So now then while running, we're gonna want to update input and draw. So let's quickly go ahead and define these functions up here. So void update, void input, and void draw. So now that we've just got some of the basic stuff just rich now, we can go ahead and we can actually make our window. So to make the window, we're going to have to create a render, and we're going to have to create the window using SDL. So we'll do that right here. So this SDL render, call render, and SDL window. I'll call that window as well. And we can have a Boolean for a full screen, so we can use that to toggle it back and forth. We're also gonna have a couple numbers and to count what frame it's on, what time it's on, so we can keep track of how many frames it needs to be rendering. Frame count. Timer FPS, last frame, and FPS. The FPS itself is just going to be calculated what FPS is actually being displayed so we can print it out to the screen for testing. So now, before we start the loop, we can go ahead and initialize everything. And we'll do some error testing. We'll just do SDL init and SDL init everything. And if that returns anything less than zero, so a negative one is like a an error, we can just say STO count. And we'll close that as well in line. And we'll just say failed to fail that SDO in it. Now we can go ahead and make our window. So to create the window, we're going to be doing if SDL create window and and render. So we'll create them both together at the exact same time. Put in the width, the height, which we defined up here, and there's a tag right there. We put in zero. If we were making a full screen off the bat, you can do SDL. Uh, window full screen right here there's also full screen desktop and that just sets it to the full screen but we're not going to pass it in right now we're going to make it so we can toggle it afterwards so set zero in as that flag and then pass in the, the window and we pass in the render and if that's less than zero if there's an error we'll just do count failed at SDO create window and render and let's end that and 
now we can set the title. So set window title. And you can pass in the window and we can just name it SDO2 window. And you can disable if you want the cursor. So say you're not on the window, you can see your cursor, but as soon as you enter the window, your cursor disappears. So if you want to do that, it would be SDL show cursor. And you just put in zero. So it's false, so you don't show the cursor anymore. Put a one, it'll show the cursor. But if you don't do that at all, it'll just automatically be set to one. And then you can do SDL set hint. And we can do hint render. Um, let's see if it pops up. Scale cell quality and we can set that one to two and that just makes it so it can render the pixels better and up here we can set full screen to zero so by default the full screen is going to be turned off and now after the program is done running we're going to want to close some stuff so we'll go ahead and just do that right now do SDL destroy render and we'll pass in the render. Do the same thing with the window. Destroy window. Pass in the window. Then STL quit. Okay. So basically now this is going to create the window. This here is going to close it. So let's go ahead and change some stuff. Let's make it so we can actually render something. So in the draw function, we can go ahead and do SDL render present. You can pass in the render, and that's just going to send the buffer that's in the render to the screen, and it'll actually draw it out. Let's say we want to make it so we can have a background. So, to do that, we'll just create a rectangle. But first, let's set the color. So, render a draw color. And in there, we'll pass in the render as well. We can set a color. So, let's just say for we make it somewhat blue. Just about to pass it in. Now we cut a rectangle. You could just take this rectangle and create it out there and just set it as background or something. But just for the tutorial, I'll just show it like this. And you set that x and the rect.y. Set that to zero. And the rect.width to the width of the screen. And rect.height to height to the screen. And now we can actually draw this rectangle. Render fill rect. Render and rectangle. So this basically is just creating a rectangle that's going to be the background. You set the color for the drawing to blue. And then you just put it in the top left corner. And you have the width and the height. So it's going to fill out the whole entire thing. And any sort of additional drawing stuff that you would have on top of the background would just be right here. So now you've set that up, let's use these numbers to make it so we calculate the frames per second so it only renders 60 frames every single second. And we're going to want to start that off in the loop right here. Just at this part. We can go ahead and do last frame. And we'll set that to SDL, get ticks. So what this is going to do is just use this SDL to see what time it is. And if you do, if last frame is greater than last frame 1,000, oh, plus 1,000. So if it's past a, a second, then what we want to do is set last frame, last, sorry, last time to last frame. So now we're just resetting it to last front time frame. Then we're getting what the current FPS is to see how many times it changed in the last second. We'll set that to frame count. And we'll go ahead and move around some of this stuff afterwards and set the frame count back to zero. So now the frame count's actually changed. It's going to be in our draw function. So just right back here, we can just add it right here if you want. And we'll just do frame count plus plus and timer FPS. SDO get ticks and last frame. And if the timer FPS is greater than a thousand, so that's for the thousand milliseconds, so one second, divided by sixty, 
So that's how we actually set which one we're trying to reach to. Then as our limit, we'll set a delay. So that's DL delay, 1000 divided by 60. And let's go ahead and need to subtract that by the timer FPS. But yeah, it's basically just going to delay it to get to 60. So whatever number you have right here is what the limit's going to be for the FPS. And we can actually go ahead and print out this, this thing right here. So just to see what the actual FPS is. So let's print out that right there first for debugging purposes. In a later video, I'm going to be showing how to do better input and also like drawing to the screen and doing fonts and stuff. So you could use this technically as like a debugging UI. You can pick up this number and you can actually have it printed onto the screen so people can look at their FPS. So I'm just going to make it so we can close our screen. As we do that, we're going to set it so we can close with the X button and also with the escape button. So we're going here and go to inputs and we're going to go ahead and check for that. So what we're going to want to do first is actually pull and see which keys were pressed. So we do that with setting an event with SDO. And then we're going to loop through this and pull whatever is being read. So pull event. And just pass an out event right there. And I'll just check to see if this little X button, which is SDL quit, is clicked. So type SDO quit. And what we're just going to do is just set running to false. And now outside of here, we're also going to need to check some key buttons to see if they've been pressed. So we can just do it for the X button or for the escape button as well. And we'll create a an array that can check for that. So it's going to be const. Uh, and then we're going to call it key states. And this is going to just pull all the keys. They're just basically booleans, but it's a uint8. But we're just going to pull them and see if they're being pressed or not. But I'm going to have another video coming out sooner that's going to basically break down how to do this and it's going to be a better system for using a keyboard. And now we're just going to check for the escape key, key states. But basically the point of it is that if the keys are already been pressed, then it might think it's still being pressed even though it's pressed one single time. But that's going to be mainly important for not closing it because you're going to close it, it'll be closed for good, but for other stuff um, like toggling the screen on and off to make it bigger and smaller, which is something we're actually going to jump into right now. So we can just go ahead and do the exact same thing. Key states, SDL scan key. We can set this one to F. You can just change it to F. I think if you set it to F1, F11, you click the function button F11 and it'll make a full screen. So now I'll just do full screen equals full screen. And that just toggles it. And we can go ahead in the update function and change so we can actually check if it's full screen or not. So a full screen. SDL set window full screen window and SDO window full screen I believe you don't need the desktop part but this right here is what I was saying as you can pass in right here at this zero but yeah this just resets it and now We'll do an opposite one for that. So when it's not full screen, we'll just set it so it's the Windows version. So right there, we'll set that to zero. So what we've done so far, basically, we make the window size, we create the window, we destroy the window, we create up a loop with a frame limit of 60 frames per second, and we draw the background, have it rendered to the screen, and we check for the input to close the window and toggle it between being full screen or windowed. So now let's go ahead and compile it and see if that works. And to compile it, we're just going to be using library SDL2, which once again, I'm going to be leaving in the description for you guys to check out. All right, last time was not declared. So let's just check right here, line 56. Um, 
I think we're going to have to clear that right up here. So let's just do static int last time. Set that to zero. Now let's build that once again. All right. Now let's run it. And here's our window. SDL2. And if we actually check right here, here's our frames per second. See, it's not exactly 60, but that's what it's trying to get to. So it's limiting it at 60. So if we were to go ahead and change that 60 in the code, it'll limit it to that one. But yeah, this is it basically. All right, click escape, it closes. Click that, it'll close. And I had it set to function and F11. That should make it full screen. I'm not exactly sure if my screen record is picking it up, but it switches to full screen. And I'll just exit out of that. But yeah, so this is how to create a simple window with the SDL2 and set up the frame rate for it and create a background and some of the simple stuff you would need to make a, a window for your own application or game. And if you guys are interested, I can go ahead and post the code somewhere. Just leave in a comment that you're one of that. If you have any questions, also leave in the comment. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. That really helps. And if you guys are new here, once again, feel free to subscribe. But yeah, I'll be having new videos on SDL2, tutorials, and as long as along with OpenGL and SFML tutorials very similar to this um, coming up very soon. Let's see you guys later. Thanks, bye.